Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's CJ. Welcome back to episode 31 of the Innovator Marine 75 EXT Reef Build. Now, it's going to be a full build playlist, so if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, go back and check it out and get caught up on everything that's been going on over the last year. And for those who are not new, this is the video that's been requested a lot, and it's regarding the flow in the Be Easy Reef. So we're going to break that down, and we're also going to cover a few of the latest things that's been going on. Consider this a full update for April. Stay tuned. Let's get busy. So I'm just curious, how many of you guys watching have ever heard of an Aptasia eating blenny before? Well, join the club because this was news to me, but what better way to find out than to add one myself? So what you're looking at is going to be a Molly Miller blenny. He's a tiny little guy in the bag, but we are going to add him to the Be Easy Reef with hopes that he does what the claim is, meaning taking care of the Aptasia issues in the tank, along with grazing on, you know, the pesky algae issues that I have in here. Now, he is a baby. He's kind of a little guy amongst giants in the tank, but the verdict's still out if that is true or not. But you guys know me. If it's going to work, I'm definitely going to let you know. But if all this hair algae and aptasia, you know, stays in place over the next few weeks, then I'll let you know that as well. So for those of y'all that were curious, that chessboard is not for decoration. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready, right? So that's pretty much my philosophy. And I do play online. If you guys want to get a match in chess.com, drop a comment down below with your user ID and we can, you know, set that up. But that's not the point of this picture. It's really to kind of follow up on the ICP analyst check that I sent off on the Be Easy Reef. I sent off two tests, one for my roadie water for the uh, roadie container, make sure nothing was wrong, and the second for the reef tank. Now, I'm not going to claim to be a master of chemistry or any of that in this hobby. This actually was my first ICP test sent off, and the first results came back on the roadie water, mainly just looking for anything out of range, any issues as far as leaching from, you know, the resin not catching what it should or the water in the storage container setting too long leaching and I was happy to see no real issues as far as things out of range but the interesting part comes when I look at the results for the tank itself so as you guys can see calcium completely out of range that was really due to me kind of over buffering the tank calcium had dropped down you know below 350 I wanted to get it around 450 and overshot unfortunately but it was good to know that the Hannah checker the trident and the ICP were all on the same page with me overshooting. But the things that were not known to me was these minor elements being out of range. Chromium, potassium, iodine were some of the ones that I do remember and recognize. Uh, manganese, I'm not sure how all of these relate in my reef tank, but what I was happy to see was they provided solutions, meaning the amount you should dose and a few different options product-wise that you can purchase to kind of get those things back in check. So, you know, it's going to be some of the first steps in year two of the Be Easy Reef of really trying to stay on top of my parameters, the major, minor, and everything in between. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have any of those items on hand as far as dosing to replace those elements. But what I do have on hand is plenty of salt and roadie water to do water changes. That's pretty much what we're going to do, at least in the meantime, to help kind of you know, reduce some of the issues in the system and also replenish some of those traces that are missing. I don't expect it to be the end all be all as far as long term solutions, but it is something I have on hand and, you know, a good water change never hurts on the reef tank, right? And while doing so, might as well sneak a top down for you guys. As you guys can see, tank is still filling in nicely, but we still have a few areas of concern that need to be addressed during the water change, algae, and of course, some empty rock work needing to be refilled, but we're not adding another coral, especially hard corals, until we get the water in check. And part of getting the water in check is not only the ICP test for trace elements, but also nutrient management. Now, as you guys know, I have been fighting dinos for the last few months, and in doing so, I purposely raised the nutrients in the Be Easy Reef, but they kept going up after the dinos disappeared. So it's time to finally kick on the export. As you guys can see, we got mechanical filtration. We got the skimmer back online. And then that little red light is going to be the algae scrubber also online. Now the goal is simple to introduce the export 
but not doing it blindly like I did before, meaning we're sticking to the routine of weekly to bi-weekly nutrient checks. And in doing so, able to track how much it's dropping, how fast it's dropping. As you guys can see, we've already reduced it from almost 45 parts per million nitrate to around the 14 or 15. And then we had that same reduction regarding the phosphates in the system, just from a water change and kicking on the export. But this is gonna be the part where I'm gonna be extra careful, meaning that steady decline, I wanna level out and flatten the curve and lock these nutrients in. And by locking them in, there's gonna be reducing the photo period on the algae scrubber, which is just now starting to grow algae, you know, reducing some of the skimming that's happening or adjusting the feedings on the tank. So it's not gonna be a quick process. It's gonna be something that's gonna take time, but I do wanna make sure that I'm tracking the parameters as I'm doing so. Now, the only negative impact I've noticed from this is a little brown starting to show up on the sand bed. You know, at first it made me almost wanna panic thinking dinos are coming back, but I have nutrients in the tank. I'm thinking this may just be related to the water change, maybe some extra silicates, but we shall see. So that should give you guys a small idea of some of the work I'm putting in on the Be Easy Reef. And when it comes to consistency on my testing, tracking things, and trying to manage my nutrients, you know, import, export, and the traces on the tank, just overall water quality in general is going to be the name of the game year two on the Be Easy Reef as I continue to pursue being able to re-add SPS to the tank and hopefully, you know, have success with the coral that has escaped me over this time in the hobby. But at this point in the vid, it's time to switch gears. And we're finally going to dive deeper into the Be Easy Mixed Reef flow scheme on the tank. A lot of people have been asking me, CJ, how do you have the wave going? You know, what kind of pumps are you using? We're going to cover all of that in this portion of the video. And I will say this, if you're new to the hobby, selecting flow in the reef tank is already something, you know, if you're not experienced with, it definitely can be intimidating. When you have a mixed reef, it definitely makes it harder. So many things to consider. You know, one, your aquascape. Do you want to place your pumps and then make your corals? Um, accommodate those pumps or do you want to place your corals and then move your pumps around to accommodate the corals you really have to kind of balance it out in between those things also coral needs whether it's flow no flow you know stingers tentacles sweepers whatever you want to call it you just want to make sure that everything fits together the right way and in my tank i definitely have a huge blend of those corals and hopefully, you know, by the time I'm done explaining this, you get a better idea of why I'm doing the things I'm doing. So let's get to it. Now, one of the main questions I want to address is going to be how I'm actually controlling the pumps on the Be Easy Reef. Now, as you guys know, the AI Orbit and the MP40s come with built-in Mobius control. It's an app on the phone. It's Bluetooth control that allows you to sync with those devices. Now, on my dashboard, I'm using the MXM. That's what you'll see on the top right. But I'm not going to walk you through all the settings on this because this is not how I'm primarily using the pumps. What I want to do is kind of show you the options that are available. So when we go over to the MXM, you can kind of see what's there, what's missing, you know, what they brought over and what you actually may have to use Mobius for. Now, as you scroll through, you kind of see all the options available. It's around, I think, 11 different options as far as flow patterns, feed modes, pulse, constant, lagoon, you know, child modes as far as syncing the pumps. All of those options are available through Mobius on the MP40s, which honestly, if that's all you need it, I would just stop there. Mobius is more than capable of, you know, allowing you to set up any kind of flow pattern you want on those MP40s. Now, when it comes to the orbit, it's a little different. It does not have as many options as the MP40s, which I guess is to be expected because it's just, a, you know, a gyro flow type pattern. Now you can select the pulse frequencies and you can also select a random mode that allows you to let the pump vary its speed up and down as it's ramping. You can select the, the duration and how often it changes its speed, which I like. So the random flow is probably gonna be my most favorite, I guess, option within the AI Orbit pump that allows you to be able to control it through Mobius. Now, what about the MXM? Once you sync your devices over to the Apex, if you didn't notice, it said fallback mode on the Mobius app. 
That is if the MXM loses connection or your Apex goes offline. Whatever your fallback settings were on Mobius is going to be what the pumps go back and kind of default to. So it's good to have that redundancy as far as a backup setting. But once you move over to the Apex, you do have a lot of the similar settings, especially when it comes to the AI orbit. As you can see, it gives you time, set points, and it also gives you the same four flow options that were available within Mobius, which is pretty neat. And once you select it, you know, you hit the upload button and it syncs right away. And if you have more than one of those pumps, you are able to group those pumps and copy the settings between them and also upload and share settings between other users within the Apex Fusion. So that is pretty dope option when it comes to, you know, being able to share flow patterns among hobbyists. Now, when it comes to the MP40, everything is almost the same and i say almost because those 11 options that were available within the mobius you only have eight within the mxm and the ones that are missing is going to be the feed mode which honestly is kind of pointless because you can set that up within the apex itself it also is consolidating the pulses instead of a long and short post option you just have one pulse and i believe there was a transition flow option within mobius that really I don't see the need for it either. So the eight options that are available also gives you the ability to sync and anti-sync your MP40s. You can still share profiles between them. You can still also upload and download other people's profiles within Fusion and it all works the same. So overall, I'm happy with MXM, very responsive. Now I will tell you if your Apex goes offline and you know, of course you can't use it, but other than that, you hit the button the change happens in pretty instant. So Mobius versus MXM, I think it's personal preference for me. I enjoy having everything in one place. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, placing your pumps in your tank really is dictated by, for one, your aquascape, and two, it's the kind of cores you want to put in the tank. And in my situation, my scape being a floating scape reaching up towards the surface of the water really left me no choice as far as the pump placement in my tank. Knowing that it was going to be a mixed reef and knowing I didn't want to really blast the coils directly, it left me no choice besides splitting the MP40s on the left side of the system, basically shooting down the front and back side of the tank. Now, if you guys notice, there is a standing wave in my system and it's handled by the MP40 on the right. I pretty much have each pump assigned to do a specific duty on the B-Easy Reef and the pump on the left is going to be assigned for that strong, you know, random flow down the back side of the tank, which helps kind of spin water around the front side of the tank, and also is gonna help hit the SPS arch on the back side. So it really is a purpose for both of these MP40s, and they're not really working synced together. They're working individually, which allows me to really manipulate the flow in the tank. And we'll discuss that a little bit more later in the video. Now, a lot of question I got a lot was gonna be the standing wave. How am I doing this? Well, it's very simple. On a tank that's three feet long, I found that the resonant frequency is around 350 milliseconds. So if you set your pump to around 340 to 350 milliseconds, whatever power you choose, doesn't matter. You are gonna accomplish that standing wave. And these pumps are strong enough to be able to get, you know, that's wave really rocking almost out of the tank. So I only have one assigned to this task. If I ever synced both and turned them up 100%, it definitely would be water on the floor. I tried it, trust me. I just didn't record it, never again. And then on the left side, of course, this pump is assigned reef crash, lagoon modes, uh, nutrient transport modes, just anything random to kind of get the water moving on this left side. Now, when it comes to the right side of the tank, total different situation. First of all, there is no peak setting right in front of this pump and impeding any of the flow. So it definitely fit the need for a gyro pump more than anything else. Previously, I did have an MP40 on this side and I noticed the MP40 blasting the SPS arch a little too directly and there really wasn't enough room for the water to disperse. So instead of having a pump that was gonna blast the scape, I wanted a pump on this side that would just move water across the top of the aquascape and of course you know the gyro type flow pattern from this orbit 4 pump gets the job done now unfortunately 
you couldn't program the orbit to get the standing wave on this tank it doesn't allow you to get the 350 millisecond pulse that's needed i'm not sure if they're going to do an update to allow the driver to do that but it's okay i got the mp40s handling the wave and this orbit pump is just moving water and tons of it to say the least and the great thing is with it shooting water across the top i don't have to hit any coils directly and it's definitely a strong current going across the sps archway when i have it there and it reaches all the way to the other side of the tank crossing the arch crossing the peak and then hitting down the back side as well so definitely i'm so glad that i decided to put the orbit on the side and this other side effect is going to be it's great for dispersing food <laughs> so the auto feeder the floating ring i positioned it right over the gyro pump so when the food actually does hit it it's immediately blown all over the tank i know a lot of people like you know putting pumps in feed mode and you know stopping the water i just feel like letting that food go all over the tank helps every fish get a chance to get it if all the fish is in one spot then you know it definitely chances for someone to get bullied and then of course you know the mesh top collects some food on it you have to kind of get off here sometimes but other than that i'm really liking the way this is planned and how it's working so far when it comes to the pump placement and the be easy reef and the auto feeder the lid the floating feeding ring it all is just working and i'm glad i was able to kind of figure this out now another major benefit of these pumps kind of facing each other the mp 4 is in the left and the orbit pump on the right is going to be how they interact with each other and how the water flows intersect especially when it comes to the surface agitation in the tank now of course mp40s are not really designed to run on top of the water i pretty much have them as high as i can without sucking air for that reason but they do impact the surface of the water and they make sure that there is no dead spots literally zero surface scum build up you know dust anything nothing stays on the surface of the tank and it all is forced down the overflow of the external overflow down the filtration and it really just helps with the water clarity in the big easy reef now something i want to mention is going to be using pumps against each other and this is going to be where you know pump placement matters and also understanding how water flow works matters meaning as you guys can see as the pump on the left on the front gives you that constant pulse of the rocking wave you see where it's hitting in the middle and then the pump on the back is slowly ramping up and down along with the gyro on the right ramping up and down and as they ramp up and down there's different intersecting points in the system and every time those flows intersect it creates a downward flow on a different part of the skate so that allows me to force water downwards instead of it just being you know a horizontal flow left to right I can get downspouts in between the places, the cracks and crevices of the skate and hit coils that normally would not be able to be hit if only had flow going across the tank left to right or right to the left. So as you guys can see, the torches, you know, is definitely a great indicator coil when it comes to flow in your tank. You know, the Duncan, basically any LPS coil is a great indicator coil when it comes to checking the flow in your tank to see if it's random, to see if it's really any you no know, pauses or any flows and eaves or whatever you want to call it i definitely like to try to keep the flow random and not beat the corals up so it kind of gives you guys a short idea of how i have the flow running in the system let's take a closer look at some of the corals because there are clear defined areas of flow in the system that really dictates what corals i can put there including in the middle of the tank because of it kind of being in an open area I'm able to hit it from right to left with flow, but I also have to be able to hit this area with downward flow to kind of keep these pools clear of detritus. So a nice rocking back and forth, followed by a different blast of flow downward every now and then, really benefits those pools and keeping them clean. And then of course you have the hammer guard on the left, which is kind of in a slow lower flow type area, being mounted underneath the MP40 really helps it not get hit with anything and the main reason for that is because the mp40 and the gyro constantly fight in the middle of the tank 
and those downward spouts rarely make their way over the hammer garden. So that's something that's purposely done. And to accomplish that, I have to make sure that at any point in time of the day, I wanna make sure that I never allow the gyro flow to be so strong that it overpowers the MP40s. And it's really kind of a constant dance of, you know, which pump is turned up more than the other. And then of course, you know, leaving the scape open and allowing water to flow underneath the overhangs backwards and forwards definitely benefits a lot when it comes to the right side of the tank and on the left side of the tank where it's not as open and where you have the peak kind of breaking the water up and the MP40s fighting against the gyro, you end up with low flow areas that allows me to put coils like this bubble coil. Clear difference in flow. Bubble coils barely moving on the left side of the tank. And if you look further in the background, you can see the torches getting all kinds of downward random flow in the middle of the tank. So even in a three foot tank with an aquascape that is as open as mine is, I'm still able to kind of dictate the flow and create those, you know, dead areas, semi-dead areas in the tank to allow a sense of bubble coral to thrive and also be able to have the illusion of water moving all over the tank when it's really not as chaotic as it seems. So the surface of the tank completely crazy, but different areas of the scape, not so much. Now when it comes to feeding the tank, of course the auto feeder runs and goes off the same times every day. It's pretty funny watching the fish before it happens. As you can see, they're all like, what's going on? They even hear the auto feeder and everyone runs for the feeding ring and preparing to kind of grab anything it can before it hits the flow. And like I said before, I know a lot of people think feed mode is the best option for feeding the tank. And in some cases, I guess it is because it helps you control where the food goes and make sure it doesn't get trapped in the rock or other places. But I just love the activity. And not only the activity, I love watching the flow in the reef tank. Food is a great way to see where water is going in your tank, where the dead spots potentially are, you know, where you may be able to mount corals. Any kind of particulate that you put in the tank gives you a clue to that. So if you turn off your flow anytime something that's going to cloud your water up or you know, anytime you're feeding the fish, you kind of rob and deprive yourself of that daily look of flow in your system you know besides that i just love watching the fish actually have to hunt down a flake a pellet you know and kind of spread themselves out all over the aquascape and it's really just it's just a joy to watch honestly it's just entertaining for me it's one of my favorite parts of the reef tank so more of the story food going all over the place is makes your fish active more healthy in my opinion and also allows you to kind of see where the flow is in your tank so all positives for me so hopefully it kind of gives you guys an idea behind the flow in the be easy reef you know with it being a mixed reef and the amount of potential flow i could create in this system is absolutely crazy and i honestly can't turn the flow up to 100 percent like i really want to for fear of you know tearing polyps off of lps coral sand blowing everywhere but i will continue to push the limits and push the flow in my tank as high as I can because I just feels like it benefits everything so much. You know, my water is always crystal clear. That's something that I don't really speak about because I've gotten so used to it being clear, but I do believe that the flow in the reef tank is part of that. Not only that, it helps keep the sand bed clear and with the aquascape floating above the sand, it also lets that water get underneath the tank. So, you know, when it comes to flow in the tank, this is probably the most flow. I've ever pushed through a reef tank before and I'm just glad to see every coral in the system moving some kind of way so this is going to be I guess a mixed reef with the potential flow of an SPS tank all mixed in one which is exactly what I need to have success that I want keeping all the different kind of corals in the system that I have so as you guys can see from some of these close-up shots some corals are moving some are grooving some are chilling, others are just wiggling, and overall, none of them are upset to the point that they won't open. You know, of course, some may open more if they didn't have as much flow, but it's hard to satisfy all the needs of all the corals all at one time. So at this point, 
I think we're going to wrap up the video when it comes to talking about the flow and we're going to focus more on what's to come and what's to come in the be easy reef is going to be slow and steady guys going to set back and let the tank cook a little while and by cook meaning we're going to test parameters we're going to keep sending off icds we're going to keep managing the nutrients the export and then like i said before in the beginning of the video hopefully in the near future able to reload the tank and refill that SPS archway, which is the only part of the tank that's void of color. And hopefully, you know, once I fill that tank up, it'll be able to take advantage of all the flow that I have available for those SPS. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want more content more often, go slide by my Instagram at CJ's Aquariums. I always post there pretty, you know, pretty often, almost daily at this point for future updates. And then as always, hey, you guys can like, comment, subscribe. You guys keep doing what y'all do. Y'all be easy and happy reefing. Peace.